We're going to use a, uh, a slightly different technique uh, to find the same things we've been finding before. In fact, for this first step, we'll, first couple times we step through this, we'll do something we could have already done weeks, if not months ago, just to show you that this works. And then we'll step it up a little bit and start applying it to more complex this technique works very well for structures. We'll step it up to more complex structures that would be difficult using our older methods. Become a little bit easier, I think, with this uh, this method sometimes. This and and this you'll love the name of this because it's kind of where all of your heads are at anyway. This is called the method of virtual work. Bill's back there smiling. Yeah, I can get behind this. It's <laughs> awesome. I like this already. The idea, remember, uh, everything in this class is in static equilibrium. In fact, certainly the structures, for the most part, we don't want even to move at all. What we're going to do is to imagine them to have a small virtual displacement, calculate the work done during that, virtual displacement and then set that work to zero because the virtual displacement is not real so there can't really be any work. We'll set that work to zero and that will allow us to solve for the forces. <coughs> Is that clear, Bill? Or you, you need some, need a little ex Okay, let me give you a little explanation of, of, of how we're doing this. Um, we'll, we'll base it on this relatively simple problem that we could have done anyway. In fact, we'll be able to do it in our heads, um, but it'll allow us then to ch check and see how this, this method of virtual work is going. So a simple beam resting against one wall, pinned at one end, just resting against one wall with an applied moment and we want to find the reactions. Something we, we uh, would have done before and, and <clears throat> don't find any particular stress doing this the old way, but we're going to keep it simple as we do this method of virtual work uh, to get things going. And so that thing's at an angle alpha. And you know that all that stuff comes into it. So. Um, let me double check and make sure we're using the mass on Yeah, we're going to use the mass on this one. All right. What we're going to do is imagine this goes through a little bit of a virtual displacement. The reactions and any other forces will go along with that virtual displacement and thus they'll do work. We'll calculate that work, set it equal to zero because it didn't really exist anyway, it was virtual and that will allow us to solve for the forces. <coughs> so, uh, a little bit of review first on how we calculate work. Because we're going to need to do that uh, several times here as we go. If we've got some object here upon which we're exerting a force, And that causes this object to move some distance. Then we can figure out the work done by that force. Remember that from Physics 1? Anybody remember what the definition of work was? Yeah, basically it's force times distance. Just to make sure things were a little bit more complete, uh, remember that it was the sum of any forces. And if this thing has mass, which it certainly does, we, we could throw that in there if need be. Uh, if friction is going on as it slides along the surface, we could throw that in and we'll review all that stuff. But then that was dotted with the displacement as we go from one place to another, S1 to 
S2. Remember what the dot product was for? Remember what that does for us in this, in this particular instance, why it was so important? The dot product assured for us that we were working with the component of the force in the direction of the motion. Because the component perpendicular to the force does no work. In other words, if we have some force acting precisely in the direction <coughs> of the displacement, then the work done is that force times the displacement. Kind of looking familiar from Physics 1? I know you had an awesome Physics 1 teacher, so it's, it's just fun to go back there. If we have a force that's perpendicular to the displacement, oh, and we're, we're assuming the force does not change for these, so we can leave it in there. If the force is perpendicular to the displacement, then no work is done in that instance. We're going to need to remember that. That's going to be very useful uh, as we go through this problem. If we have some friction in the problem, then what is the work done? like this situation. We have the force in the same direction as the motion, except it's opposed to the motion. So in this case the work is negative. Any force in opposition to the motion is a negative force. <coughs> We're going to need that as well. So that's that. I I, uh, I suspect is a fairly straightforward review because we did lots of that stuff in physics one plus. Uh, <coughs> I don't think it's all that. It's not that uh, mind blowingly complex anyway. Uh, what we didn't do much is look at the work done by uh, couples and uh, moments and the like. So let's. Let's look at that piece because that we're going to need. And that usually needs a little bit more research <coughs> for students. All right, so if we have a, an object, whatever it might be, this will be just one of our structural members in the problem. We'll call this, uh, we'll let this be of length little a. And there's a couple operating on it. And we'll keep it simple. We'll make those uh, two uh, uh, nice and perpendicular to the member. So we know the strength of that couple is We don't know the strength of that couple. It's okay. fine. Yeah, it's just the force making the the magnitude of the force making up the couple times 
the separation between the two, the, per the, the smallest separation, the perpendicular separation, which <coughs> happens to be A in this example. <coughs> and let's say because of that couple, or during the application of that couple, the piece now moves to here. It turns a little bit, and it translates a little bit. We'll call this displacement delta S A, let that be side A and that side B just for reference. And this displacement is delta S B. And we want to find out how much work was done by the couple during that. The couple has mostly to do with the turning, you can imagine, uh, but there also might be translation during the uh, during that piece. So we'll break it into those two things. We start with our object there. It translates up to here first. What we're doing is we're breaking the translation and the rotation into two little parts. So that'll be a distance of delta S A. And then we'll add on to that a rotation now and we'll have the full motion we had originally. So we'll look at those, those two little pieces. And it rotates through some, some angle we'll call theta. So those two separate motions will then equal for us the, the entire motion. How much work is done during the translation part here. We have this couple applied, magnitude f, distance a apart, but the piece only simply translates. How much work is done? Easy to figure out. We calculate the force times the distance it was applied. So that'll be, this is actually in the minus direction, so that'll be minus delta SA for the work done by this force. And how much work done by that force? Plus F delta SA. The total work done Zero. No work done by a couple for the translation part. So couples only, well, we still have to see how much work they do in, in a translation. Uh, uh, I, sorry, the rotational part. Alright, so we have this F here. We have F there, but they're in opposite directions. This displacement of this end. Uh, now, the angular displacements we're going to make are very, very small. But I have to draw them big enough to see. <coughs> so that's going to be a bit of a trouble for us. Uh, we have to. We have to. We can't take these pictures too literally. So this force will go in that direction, a distance of about a theta. A little bit sideways, um, but that's perpendicular to the motion anyway, so uh, it would be zero work, wouldn't contribute. So what we're really concerned about is the motion in the same direction, and that'll be approximately equal to a theta. So how much?
much work is done in the rotation part by this couple. Well, this force moves a distance zero, so it does no work. This force moves in the same direction as its displacement, so its work is F A theta. This one does no work. This one is the only one that contributes work in the rotational part. But FA is the strength of the couple anyway, the strength of the moment. So the work done by a moment is its magnitude times the angle through which it works. Very much like uh, like the calculation for uh, translational work. Remember when we did rotation in physics one, we had this one for one swap, everything we did? Same thing happens here. So we can figure out the work done by a moment in rotation. In translation, we don't care about it. Fair enough? Caught up now on our review of work, and we can get to this problem. See how that, see how that goes. Okay. Now, remember, these displacements we're using, these virtual displacements, are very, very small, and I'm going to have to draw them big enough to see. So, we're trying to use the method of virtual work to find the. Uh, reactions on this object. <coughs> it's got a moment applied to it. It's pinned down at one end. Let's see. Yeah, we'll label those. We usually do A and B. So we have this AY and this AX that we need to find. And it's being pushed against that other wall, which we'll, uh, we'll assume is nice and smooth, so there's no friction there. There's only the normal reaction there of that kind. And we're trying to find those. Now, we could do that in our heads with stuff we know before, but I want to do this virtual work on a very simple piece to start with. And we can check it as we go along because it's such a, such a straightforward problem. All right, so here's our first virtual displacement. Here's our P, and we're going to allow it a virtual displacement in the x direction only. And we'll, we'll make it a very small one. So instead of putting delta x, I'll put del x, lowercase delta. Just to impress upon us, this is very small. We're going to do this a lot in thermo next term. So, so you're all excited because you're already learning some stuff. So just the simple translation in the x direction is all we're looking at first. Now there were forces that went along with that. <coughs> and we have to figure out how much work they did. Our book, by the way, uses U for work rather than W, so I'll go ahead and do that. And we're looking at a little tiny bit of work, so we'll call it del U as well. U, U, this U is for work. I believe work in German starts with a U. Anybody speak German? Nein? Anybody 
sing Silent Night in the original German? Yeah, it doesn't sound good in German. <laughs> um, if you really want to, this won't be on the test, but you can write it down. If you really want to scare yourself, watch The Little Mermaid in German. <laughs> Because when Ursula the Sea Witch comes up and she's speaking German, she's scared. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's very scary in, in German. See, you're thinking about it. I just ruined your Christmas, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Just look at this. Peace will come back in your heart. <laughs> All right, so we want to see the work done during this displacement. How much work was done by this reaction during that displacement? Yeah. AX del X. How much work was done by this reaction during the displacement? Why zero? They're perpendicular. Uh, perpendicular force contributes no work during a displacement. How much work was contributed by the moment? Why none? There's no rotation. Moments do no work during translation, they only do during rotation. How much work by this one? Minus B del X. So we can pull out the del X. That's the virtual work done during this virtual small displacement. Since we didn't really do any displacement, there is no virtual work. So we set that equal to zero, which means that this must equal zero, which means AX equals B, which we knew anyway. You, you could, you've probably had that by observation. But again, remember, I'm doing this very simple one with virtual work just to prove it works for us. So del AX equals B, which we would have gotten if we summed the forces in the X direction. So it works so far. It's, it's not that this is a better way to do this problem. It's a better way to do other problems, but we got to learn how to do it first. So it works. At least it works in the x direction. So take the object and displace it in the y direction. Del y. Same forces are there. we can calculate the virtual work done in the y direction and then we can set that equal to zero as well. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. We've got the mass of this, so we have the weight in here too. No trouble on the x one, it didn't come into it, but it would on this one, so good, good thing we caught it. Um, that's why we use the U, because we already have a W for weight. All right. How much work done by AX? Y0? It's perpendicular. How much work by AY? Plus AY del Y, since they move in the same direction. How much work done by M? 
zero. How much work done by W? The weight. Minus W del Y. And how much work done by B? Zero. Again, perpendicular. We set the virtual work <coughs> equal to zero. AY minus W del Y means that this part must equal zero when we get W equals a one. So again, it works. We 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 know it works because we can do some of the forces in the y direction in our heads. So it works. So far, this is working beautifully. Not necessarily a simpler way to do this problem, but the point's not to just do this problem when we're trying to learn the virtual work method. All right, that was pretty straightforward, I hope, those two. Any trouble? Fire we'll clean up, and then we do the rotation. Now, remember, it's not really going through these displacements. They're all virtual. They're taking place in our very creative minds that don't mind thinking outside the box once in a while. I should put a box around that, and then it'd be okay, just like that. <laughs> All right, so here's here's our original object, and we'll give it a little virtual displacement. Now, remember, I have to draw it real big so we can even see it. So this is, we've already done the translation part, now, we need, now we're doing the rotation part. So uh, don't take it too literally. AY, AX, we don't have the problem finished. We know that W equals AY, but we only know AX equals B, but we don't know what they equal yet. So we still have a, a little bit of work to do. Originally, alpha with a little virtual displacement, del alpha. Okay, so let's see what we got. Um, B is there. Um, moves a distance that is what? It's L del theta. That distance. I sorry, not theta, alpha. Is that, is that right? Not exactly that. That's the arc length, but remember this is a very small displacement, so there's no no real difference between those. Oh, let's not forget, we got the weight in here, too. All right, let's see. Uh, so, uh, AY and AX do how much work during this rotation? Oh, we also have the moment. AX and AY do how much work? Zero. Why? Yeah, no displacement. If there's no displacement, there's no work done. So there's uh, there's nothing there due to that one. Um, what about the moment? How much work does it do during the virtual rotation del alpha? You agree? Negative and del alpha. Because we're rotating one way, the moment's op opposite that. So that's minus m del alpha. How much work done by the, the weight? Uh, 
now we've got one component of the weight in that direction, one component in that direction. This one here is W cosine alpha. Remember, del alpha is very small, but alpha itself isn't. And the other component? Well, W sine alpha. How much work does the W sine alpha part do? None. Only this part does, so I'm not even going to write down the other part. Um, it's in opposition to the direction it moves. So this is minus W cosine alpha times the distance it moves. Which is give or take something like that. How far is that? One half of that. Yeah, it'd be half of that because we're halfway in. So it's one half L del alpha. So that's, that's how much work our weight contributes. And then the B part, um, we can break that into this component and <coughs> that component. And that component is, I think it's, it's B sine alpha. Because the other component of B doesn't do any work for this displacement. And so this, the work done by this perpendicular component is B sine alpha, L del alpha. B sine alpha, L del alpha, which is dangerously close to sounding like a, a, a nursery rhyme. The farmer and the del alpha. <laughs> Oh, you want it in German? <laughs> Scares it. Fairy tales are scary in German. So. All right. So uh, and and uh, so we can we can pull out del alpha. Clean up this, that, and the other thing. Just cleaned up that middle one a little bit. Minus one half W L. I'm pulling out the del alpha because it's common to everything. Uh, B L sine alpha. All of that times del alpha. Does that look right? I think so. I don't think I've lost anything. Don't think I lost any minus signs. Um, and now, that's the virtual work, and we set it equal to zero, which means this part here must equal zero. And so that we can solve for m. I'm uh, sorry, solve for B, that's what we're looking for, B. And when we do that, we get exactly what we would have gotten if we solved for the, uh, uh, if we'd done the sum of the moments, probably about A, because we would have had the components of each of these uh, a particular distance away that would have been just, just what we got over there. For example, B has a moment arm about A of L 
sine alpha and that's exactly what we have here and the moment arm of the weight is one half L cosine alpha so if we calculate the moments about there it's moment contribution is W one half L exactly what we had here so this this does again give us precisely what we would have gotten with our old methods of uh, using the equilibrium equations and you can see from the answer uh, in the drawing it's very much simpler so simple it is yeah. uh, remember this is easier to do using the equilibrium equations, but that's not the point. The point was to learn the uh, virtual work method, uh, and it's much easier to learn in a simple way as we step it up to more complex problems. Questions before I give you a little one of your own to work on? No, don't. Too late. I've decided to. Alright, here's, here's one for you. Yes, you could do it. You can use the equilibrium equations to check. <coughs> Alright, pin to one end. Simple roller support at the other. And a moment applied to it and I want you to find the reactions. So very straightforward. Yeah, you can do it very quickly with the uh, equilibrium equations, but try it with the uh, with the uh, virtual work method. You can give some numbers to this. Let's see, the, uh, the length is five meters and the moment is 300 newton meters. All right, so find the, the reactions. <coughs> And then double check them, which you could do in your head, probably using the uh, moment equations, just to see if you did it right. Is there a weight? No. Don't wait at all. Yep. Are they coming right in here? Will they come, Chris? Uh, 
Back up your books, go ahead and get in. They'll put those little zip strips on your wrists. There'll be videotape in it so we can watch you on stupidest things caught on tape. Besides what I do. Alright, just looking for the reactions. Do it vir with virtual work. See if you get the same thing you would have gotten if you did it with uh, the equilibrium equations, which you can do in your head. And you can do the virtual displacement any direction you want. Just make sure you're consistent with your the, the signs that you use. And then even on more complex ones, it might be worth uh, combining uh, virtual displacement, the virtual work method with uh, some of the equilibrium equations to get the easiest of all solutions. Displacement. I've got to draw it big enough so we can see it. So this is kind of a big one. Just so we can see it. Doesn't matter what order you do it. <coughs> None. 
Moments only do work during displacements. So AX equals zero, which you could have gotten in a split second by doing the sum of the forces in the X direction. But again, we're just trying to make sure this thing works. So a little displacement in the Y direction. Doesn't matter which way. You can go up or you can go down either one. AX does no work. AY does and B does. And they're opposite to the displacement. And then we set that virtual work to zero. So AY is the opposite of B, which, again, we would have known with the uh, sum of the forces in the Y direction. So one of them is backwards. And then the rotation. Again, a very small one, but I have to drop big enough to see it. A y, a x, a x we don't even need. We know it's equal to zero now. B and m, which we know to be 300 newton meters. And again, you could go the other way with the displacement. No work done by AX or AY. How much work done by the moment? Well, you see it? How much work done by the moment? It's the size of the moment times the angular displacement. And they're in opposite directions. So it's M del alpha. How much work done by B? How far does B move? I've got 60 newtons. B moves 60 newtons? So work, work is zero. It's, it's, uh... How much work done by B for that angular displacement? It's the size of B times the length of the displacement, which is essentially five del alpha. There's a little bit of the curve there, but remember these are very small. And they're in the same direction, so they add small displacements, the cosine is essentially 1, and the sine is essentially 0, so we don't have to worry about it. 
the, the one we did before this, we had to take into account the angle because it started with an original angle. But we didn't do the cosine of del alpha. We just did the cosine of the original angle because, because we had to. It, it is not negligible. Um, set that equal to zero. And so we get then that M equals 5B. And we know what M is, so we can solve for B. That gives us A, and everything's all done. This is 5 meters, by the way. So that's where it came from. And you get B is 60 newtons. Is that what you got? I hope. start on, think about it a little bit, it's not a whole lot different than what we just did, a little bit. So we'll finish this one up on, uh, on Wednesday. Pin support there, roller support at midpoint, so it's kind of like a diving board, with a You know, this is what would happen if you had this, the SUNY Adirondack synchronized diving team for their team photo on the diving board. And you'd put the tall ones there and they got shorter as they came down here. Be just, this is how you'd model that. And boy, those girls would be impressed with you guys. Really? That's how I look to you, she'd say? <laughs> Especially the, the shorter one on the end that you said is zero. And they moved to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's, uh, find the, uh, find the reactions. Uh, the length is two meters. The maximum load there is 400 newton meters, newtons per meter. All right, so using virtual work, find that, and then you can check it with your, uh, your usual methods. And that's what we'll open with. Oh, you have a minute. You can finish it. Go. <coughs> using the method of virtual work. Distributed load. <laughs> 